بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في العرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزاء علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين الحمد لله we have توفيق to continue our study of آداب الصلاة by the late Imam Khomeini in the last session we studied the meaning is of bism from bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim and as a sample you saw that how much discussion is there for ba and is and then imam khomeini continues with allah with ar-rahman ar-rahim rest of surah al-ham surah al surah al-tawhid qul huwa allah and surah al-qadr Uh, these three surahs are discussed in 140 pages and they may need about 10-15 sessions so after reflections I thought maybe it's better we leave them aside for the time being because our aim is not tafsir our aim is uh, secrets of Salat, although that discussion can also help but uh, I thought maybe we could leave it for another time so what we do is we continue with the uh, parts of Salat we already talked about secrets and manners of Qira'a, uh, recitation and now we want to talk about ruku. And inshallah, then you know, sujood, etc. Uh, if Allah gives us tawfiq either at the end of this or separately, we can discuss these three surahs based on Adab al Salat. So, there are five chapters on etiquette and secrets of Rukur. As you know, before we go to ruku, we say takbir, Allahu Akbar. It's something that is a kind of preparation for ruku. Of course, we are not talking about only vaj, about, you know, for example, when we talked about ista'adha, a'udhu billah, it's not vaj. Some of the takbirat are not wajib, but we discuss them as these are uh, recommended parts of Salat. So the first chapter out of five is about takbir before going to ruku. After you finish your surah, second surah after Hamd, say Allahu Akbar and then you go to Ruku. He says it seems that this takbir is one of the belongings of or one of the things which are related to Ruku and helps with preparation for going to the station of Ruku. Manzele Ruku. Ruku is like a station. It needs preparation. And the etiquette and the courtesy or adab here is that when you want to go to Roku, you bring to your attention, you think about greatness of Allah, His glory, His dignity. And on the other hand, you think about your weakness, your nothingness, and considering these two that we had before several times, 
و ظل عبودیت dignity of the lord and our own you know humility and nothingness remembering this and thinking this or bringing this to your mind you say Allahu Akbar and as you know means Allahu Akbar men and Yusuf Allah is greater than any description so he's so great that we cannot describe him even when we you know sometimes you know describe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or praise him or glorify him he says we do any description because we are asked to do so we are asked to remember Allah and invocate him in these ways otherwise if we had no permission we shouldn't have dared describing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when Imam Zain al-Abidin says that with my tongue I am not able to thank you, then what about us? He says, Afa bilisani hadal kale ashkuroka. Shall I thank you with this tongue which is unable to speak? So we thank him, we describe him, we make tawsif as a kind of taklif, as a kind of command that we want to implement. Otherwise, we don't feel that we are so important that we can, you know, do it properly. So, Roku is very significant position or a station and we need to prepare ourselves for that. You raise your hands close to your ears in the way that you are doing two things. One is you are putting aside or behind something and one is that with empty hands you are facing. He says the secrets of this takbir with raising hands is that you are saying that whatever description, whatever worship whatever suluk wayfaring i have had i throw it behind means i don't rely on them i don't think they can save me themselves i am empty-handed i put up it's not that you know i say i have done lots of ibadah i want to bring them you know to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with empty hands but also hope so we have fear but we have also hope we go towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and here the journey starts after this with ruku and then sujood and we are very pleased that Allah has allowed us to do ruku to do what Allah and the lovers of Allah do it properly the second chapter is about the manners of bending for Roku before we talk about bending for Roku he says Please remember that although Salat has lots of actions, lots of parts, you know, conditions, etc., the main elements, the main parts of Salat are three. Everything is built upon them. 
قیام رکوع سجود Either you are standing or bending or prostrating اهل المعرفه those who are involved in Irfan they say these three are three kinds of Tawheed so they call these three Tawheedat Salase three kinds of Tawheed and he says in the book Serro Salat because Imam Khomeini has a shorter book Serro Salat which is for scholars and then he has Adabu Salat, which is of course very scholarly, but he wrote this for more general public. In Serro Salat, he says, we explain these three according to mystical understanding, according to mystical zok, taste. But here we explain them in a different way, which is more suitable for the public. But that public that he has in mind is very uh, still highly educated public. So he says Salat is Mi'rajul Mu'man. As you know, as Salatu Mi'rajul Mu'man. If you want to expand it, Salat is Mi'raj Kamali Mu'man. Means Mu'man in Salat is rising in perfection. Yeah? Because we, we don't mean by rising, rising in physical height. Like someone who climbs mountain is rising. When we say mi'raj, it's not rising in physical height. It's rising in perfection. Mi'raj kamali mu'min wa muqarrib. Salat makes you closer, as we will mention, inshallah. Salatu qurbanu kulli taqi. But for Mu'min it's Mi'raj Kamali and for Muttaqi is Muqarrib it's taking him or her closer and Salat as Mi'raj Kamali and as Muqarrib has two you can say prerequisites one not to see yourself not to be egoistic not to be selfish and this is the secret of taqwa all our problems start with being egoistic and selfish the second prerequisite or element is khodakhahi so instead of khodakhahi which is selfishness to be egoistic you become god centered you seek god you seek haq the truth and this is the reality of Mi'raj and Qurb. So reality of not being egoistic is Taqwa. The reality of seeking God is Mi'raj, is Qurb. Therefore, in Hadith we have As-Salatu Qurbanu Kull Taqi. Every pious, every Taqi, every Muttaqi with Salat can get closer. Qurban means something that helps you to get closer. Also in the Quran says, Zalika al-Kitab la rayba fi hudan lil muttaqin. In the same way that guidance of the Quran is benefiting muttaqin, Salat is also benefiting for qurb, for nearness, muttaqin. Qurban kulli taqi. So, in Qiyam, we have to achieve these two. Getting rid of egoistic view, become God-centered. In Ruku, we have to get rid of egoistic view and be God-centered. In Sujood, the same. So, little by little, we improve. In Qiyam, now we explain Tawhidat Salase. In Qiyam, you leave aside being egoistic, being self-centered 
according to the position of fa'liya. What does it mean? means you only see Allah as the agent, as the doer, as fa'il. In ruku' you leave egoistic view according to sifat and asma, attributes and names. So first is Tawheed Af'ali, second is Tawheed Sifati. In sujood, you leave aside any kind of egoistic view, any kind of selfishness or self-centeredness, and absolutely God becomes the center. So these are three levels of Tawheed. It's like Tawheed Zati. And he says, of course, all the stations of wayfarer towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are related to these three, which we have in Qiyam and Ruku and Sujood. Similarly, you can find it anything that wayfarers do. And he says, when you go from Qiyam to Ruku and Ruku to Sujood, you have to be very careful because these are very significant uh, transitions, very important transitions. When you are in Ruku, which is about Sifat and Asma, what you are claiming is that in the realm of existence, knowledge is only for Allah. Power is only for Allah. This Tawit Sifati, life is only for Allah. Will is only for Allah. This is a very important claim. And we are unfortunately not really able to say this honestly, that I see every knowledge belongs to Allah, every power. No one else has anything unless it's coming from Him. We are very uh, incompetent for that. Therefore, the best thing for us is as people who are desperate, ask Allah for help. So we should say to Allah, we are desperate. Please help us to be able to do ruku properly. Please enable us to reach Tawheed al-Safati. This was the second chapter. So the first chapter was about takbir before ruku. The second was about secrets of bending for ruku. The third is about what we have in the story of ascension of the Prophet, Mi'raj of the Prophet وسلم, and the Salat that he had in Mi'raj. So in a hadith that you find in many books, uh, when Rasulullah went to Ruku, he received this address. Fanzur ila arshi. Look at my throne. Qala Rasulullah, fannazartu ila azamatin zahabat laha nafsi. Wa ghushia alayha. I look at, looked at such a greatness that I was overwhelmed with love and appreciation and greatness were, you know, so high that Zahabat laha nafsi, my soul went after that, meaning like I became unconscious. I became unconscious. And then I was inspired to say, Subhana Rabbi al Azim wa bihamdi. Because of the greatness of what I saw, 
I was inspired to say ذكر ركوع سبحان ربي العظيم وبحمده فلما قلت ذلك تجلى الغش عن دين غش that you know unconsciousness went away and when I said this seven times سبحان ربي العظيم وحمد سبحان ربي العظيم وحمد seven times فرجعت إلي نفسي كما كانت my soul my you know life or you can say my you know consciousness came back as it used to be before this you can find this hadith in many books for example uh, in Elal al-Shara'i volume 2 page 320 so, sorry 312 Elal al-Shara'i page 312 of volume 2 Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says uh, what Rasulullah you know experience was uh, you find it in Biharul Anwar uh, for example volume 79 page 237 you find it in Basail Shia volume 5 page 465 and also Bihar Anwar, volume 18, page 354. So you find it in different sources. So, as we said, in this chapter, we want to talk about the significance of Roku based on the uh, experience of the Prophet in Salat Mi'raj. He says, my dear, please look at the greatness of the saluk, the conduct of the Prophet when he is in ruku and looks at lower than Allah, madun. He looks at arsh. Light of Arsh for Awliyaullah is a manifestation of essence of Allah without mirror. This is why it was so overwhelming. Arsh, I repeat, Arsh, dar nazar noor arsh dar nazar awliya jilwe zat ast bi mirat the light of divine throne in the view of awliya allah is manifestation of essence of allah without mirror you know like looking at the sun without mirror look at the light of the sun without mirror without any some you know anything between you and the sun therefore when they look at such great light then rashia happens because it's overwhelming then allah helped rasulullah by inspiring him to do three things tasbih ta'zim and tahmid Subhan Rabbi al wa bihamdeh. There are three things here. Tasbih, ta'zim, and tahmid. And he did it seven times. Because there are seven hijab, seven veils. Or seven levels of reaching insan kamil. After that, he had consciousness, or you can say sahw. Sahvit Sad and Ha, not Sahvit Sin and Ha Havas. Sad and Ha Hoti. Sahv in this way means awakeness, consciousness. And this continues in all Salat Mi'raj. So, now that we don't have access to that 
beautiful solitude of acquaintance with Allah, at least we should acknowledge and say, oh Allah, please help us, we are very needy, we are very much, you know, left behind. Please help us so that we can also breathe something, uh, sorry, smell something, some of this breeze. And Allah is the one whose habit is generosity, is, you know, having favor, so inshallah he will give us something. Then he says, Tasbih, as you know, means Tanzih, as Tawsif. Means you glorify Allah and you say, we cannot describe him. Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Izzat Amma Yasifun. Any description falls short except Mukhlasun, who can describe Allah. Allah Ibad Allah Al Mukhlasin, that's different. So Tasbih means we say, we cannot describe him, we cannot define him. Ta'zim to honor and to revere and consider him great and tahmi to praise means that on the one hand we don't want to do ta'til, on the other hand we don't want to do tashbi. Alhamdulillah, those of you that studied uh, kalam uh, in Hose, you remember. There are people who say we cannot describe God at all. We cannot understand anything about God. Therefore, we should suspend any discussion about God. Ta'til means to suspend, to cancel. We don't accept this. We say we can understand something. But then there are people that they liken Allah to his creatures, especially to human beings. They have anthropomorphism. We say, no, no tashbi. Neither ta'til nor tashbi. We have to be very careful. We can understand something, but we have to be always very careful. And at the end also say, Allah is greater than this. If you say he is alim, we understand what does it mean that he is alim, but not like our knowledge. Or if he is high, not like our life, which depends on air and food, etc. So we have to be careful. So, ta'zim wa ta'hmid means that we want to avoid tashbih and ta'til. Tashbih also means tanzi to glorify him. So, when you look at creatures of Allah which act like mir'at, like mirrors, you do hamd, because you see reflection of beauty of Allah in these mirrors. You praise Allah. And ta'zim means you say we cannot define him. Allah is zahir, is very clear, and there's nothing clearer than him. As Imam Hussein said in Dua Arafah, أَيَّكُونُ لِغَيْرَكَ مِنَ الظُّهُورِ مَا لَيْسَ لَكْ مَتَا غِبْتَ حَتَّى تَحْتَاجَ إِلَى دَلِيلِ حَتَّى يَكُونَ Sorry, أَلِغَيْرَكَ مِنَ الظُّهُورِ مَا لَيْسَ لَكْ حَتَّى يَكُونَ هُوَ الْمُظْهِرَ لَكْ So, what zuhur they have so that they help us to reach you? You have the greatest clarity. The fourth chapter is about a passage from Misbahu Sharia, the lantern of the path, which is attributed to Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. There is very deep a statement here about Ruku. La yarka'u abdun lillah ruku'an ala al إلا زينه الله تعالى بنور بهائه وأذله في ظلال كبريائه وكساه كسوة أسفيائه No one does ركوع for Allah على الحقيقة in its reality So if we do ركوع 
with true esprit of Roku, with its reality, not artificial, like, not just like, you know, a kind of um, image of Roku. No, if we really bring Roku, then Allah will beautify this servant with the light of his Baha, from his light. And Allah provides a shadow of his Kebriya upon this person and dresses him with the dress of his chosen servants. So Roku can quickly enable you to join the circle of chosen servants of Allah and be given the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. الركوع أول والركوع أول والسجود الثان. In مسبح الشريعة says ركوع is the first and sujud is the second prostration. What does it mean? It means that ركوع helps with sujud. من فمن أتى بمعنى الأول سلوح الثاني. Whoever can bring Ruku properly, then is able to do sajda. Is qualified for sajda. Fir ruku adabun wa fis sujude qurbun. In ruku there is adab. You show your politeness. You show your respect. You honor your master, your lord, as a servant. But in sujood, you get the result, you get nearness. So you understand the difference between ruku and sujood, but how they are also closely connected. So in a sense, we can say the first and the maybe major step is ruku. If you do ruku properly, then you are prepared for sujood. Therefore, it says, "Waman la yuhsinul adab la yaslah lil qurb." If someone doesn't show good adab, good courtesy, good politeness, would not suit qurb, cannot be qualified for getting closer to the master. Farka. Roku akhadhin lillah bi qalbih mutadhallilin wajilin tahta sultan So now that this is the situation with Roku, so do Roku of someone who is very humble for Allah with his heart. Someone who is very humble with his heart, showing humility of someone who is under his sultan, under his authority or sovereignty. And be very careful not to lose the benefit that Raqi'in take. You have to be very careful and also fearful of losing the benefits that those who are Raqi'in. Farqa'i ma'ar Raqi'in. Raqi'in by itself, you know, is a Category. Hukia an Rabi Abn Khusaim kana yasharu bil lail ila al fajr fi rak'atin wahida. One of the Sufis or one of the you know spiritual people sometimes was spending the whole night till Fajr in one Ruku'ah. Going to ruku for a few hours. Then, فَإِذَا هُوَ أَسْبَحَ رَفَعَ When it was the time of Fajr, he was raising his body and he was saying, Ah! Oh, he was feeling very sad that those who are mukhlis they have preceded 
we are left behind although he was so much in love with Allah that was doing ruku all night he was feeling that it's too little also when you are doing ruku try to bend in the way that your back is straight and level and you must also know that you cannot serve him except with his own help and run away with your heart from temptations of shaitan the tricks and the traps of shaitan فإن الله تعالى يرفع عباده بقدر تواضعهم له. Allah raises His servants according to the level of their humility. من تواضع لله as you know رفعه الله. Whoever is humble for Allah before Allah, Allah will raise them. Here also says something similar. يرفع عباده بقدر أو بقدر قدر قدر أو سيميلر تواضعهم له. So Allah raises His servants according to the level of their تواضع. ويهديهم إلى أصول التواضع. And then Allah Himself guides them to the principles and the roots of humility. بقدر تلاع عظمته على سراره according to the level of their inner selves being aware of his greatness so first you feel greatness of Allah then you become humble then Allah will raise you so this is the significance of understanding Allah's greatness so this is um, chapter 4 inshallah we continue this discussion next week alhamdulillah rabbil alamin